I'm Michaela Pochner, Managing Editor at No-Till Farmer. I'm here at the Big Soil Health Event in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Cultivase. Thank you very much for that intro, Michaela. Looking forward to your reports from Iowa in the coming days. Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Noah Newman, Technology Editor. Great to have you with us as always. The Water and Soil Health Conference took place in Wisconsin Dells last week. Marin McRae from the University of Waterloo in Canada delivered the keynote presentation on phosphorus loss in cold regions. Road Warrior Michaela Pauchner was there. She caught up with her for a key no-till takeaway and the winning combo for minimizing loss. The best thing that people can do is accompany no-till with a subsurface band or a subsurface placement at the time of seeding. That is going to be the best thing to minimize phosphorus losses. But in some landscapes, especially if you have a lot of tile drainage in clays and preferential flow between the surface and those clays, you might be better off with a, a rotational conservation till just to break up that stratification rather than being a full no-till and leaving it on the surface just because of that danger. And McCray says the planter is the best tool to use for subsurface placement to minimize soil disturbance. Moving on, the farmer feature takes us to Hatton, Missouri, where Luke Lindenbringer, great name, was struggling with degraded soils and stagnant yields until he made a switch from conventional tillage to no-till in 2012. He plants cover crops on all his acres as well, either drilling or broadcasting one bushel of cereal rye per acre after fall harvest and he built his own roller attachments for his John Deere planter to flatten cereal rye at planting. The rollers are five feet wide. He built them using eight inch tube steel walls and added bearings and springs to finish the attachment. The rollers are a big part of his two pass system for soybeans. These just weigh about five to 600 pounds a piece and the weight of them uh, lays, the, lays the crop down. I'm just using the, the rolled rye as a mulch. Um, I, I use chemicals to terminate um, after, um, but the roller, it just m provides me a, a, a grown mulch on the ground that I, that I, that I work with. Um, I have tanks on here that I use for two by two fertilizer and starter. Um, or when I'm planting beans, I use these tanks for spray and I spray with the planter as well. Um, and then I'll, so I'll roll, plant, spray, and lay down the fertilizer in one pass. Um, and I've had conventional beans that I haven't had to go back to until I harvested the beans. So a two pass system, planting and harvesting. Luke says he lets the rye grow well in the spring. He says he doesn't have any problems rolling it when it's really heavy. It does have some problems, though, when it's light. Speaking of rye, it is time now for the Cover Crop Connection. McCain Vogel joins us this week from the Soil Management Summit in Alexandria, Minnesota. McCain, take it away. Good morning from Alexandria, Minnesota. McCain Vogel here with this week's Cover Crop Connection. I'm here at the Soil Management Summit, and this morning going through some live demonstrations. So. Why don't we check in with Anna Cates of University of Minnesota Extension for a live cover crop demonstration. So as the plant pulls in carbon from the atmosphere, it's building this biomass above ground, the shoots, it's building those roots below ground, and then it's also sloughing off a lot of carbon in the form of exudates. So root exudates are what we call the kind of excess carbon that the plant uh, gives up and that microbes take up that live on the plant. So microbes like to live right on the surface of those roots. It's, uh, it's like living next to a, I don't know, a soup kitchen or something like that. They can just get as much food as they want whenever they want to. Uh, the rate of nutrient cycling on the surface of the root can be four or five times higher than in the rest of the soil. That's because the microbes are there, they have, sort, have ready access to food, and so they're able to do the things like transform inorganic nitrogen into plant available nitrogen or plant available phosphorus and other nutrients uh, so that the plant can take those up. So what are root exudates? What are they made of? They're mostly just sugar, just carbohydrates, 85, 90% sugar and carbohydrates. And so for the microbe, it's like, you know, it's like your kids eating mac and cheese every single day. They are psyched, they are happy, they are moving along. So the microbes like that stuff. The other part of it is organic acids. 
And that can actually affect the structure of the soil. This organic acid can leach into the soil and actually liberate organic matter that was otherwise bound up with a clay particle. So you've got these two elements of the root exudates that help to speed up nutrient cycling. The one is just feeding microbes and keeping that population happy. And the other is liberating some organic matter from the soil. Lots of good stuff going on this week at the Soil Management Summit in Alexandria, Minnesota. Make sure you stay tuned in the coming weeks for more content. For this week, that's all. For the Cover Crop Connection, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. Thank you very much, McCain. A growing number of major food companies are teaming up with conservation-minded farmers. That's where Star of the West Milling Company comes in. The Frankenmuth, Michigan-based company is connecting no-tillers to some of those major food companies. And as Sustainability Director Lisa Woodkey tells us, they actually help farmers secure big bucks from a company called Airly Crackers. Airly is a division of Post, and they came to us and said they wanted um, to work with farmers that had carbon negative wheat. And so we had to work through what that looked like, um, doing an LCA um, on the farm and then on our mill. And we track how far they bring that wheat in. We track, um, so all the growers that qualified are no-till, have added cover in the last one to five years. Um, some use some non-synthetic fertilizer, like I talked about, all of them track it. Some have some uh, solar panels for their farm electricity, et cetera. So take all of that into account. And then we were able to certify that the fields were less than 20 um, CO2 equivalents per bushel. So negative 20 or better for all of, the, all of the wheat that came from those growers that went into those early crackers. Cool stuff there. The Airly brand is now carried at several hundred Walmarts across the country. And she says it's the highest payment star of the West has ever gotten for growers, but she's optimistic it could soon become the norm. Time now to go ahead of the curve. Over 50 ag tech companies gather inside the Innovation Hub to showcase cutting edge technologies at the Nebraska Ag Expo. And that's where we find Sestere CEO Michael Cauley. He gives us a rundown on his company's use of ultra high pressure water jets to cut through residue in no-till operations. Our product is, is uh, a retrofit row unit that we can install on any existing planter. It consists of two parts, a ski uh, part that presses down the residue on the field, and then the jet that pumps water at 60,000 pounds per square inch. We've designed the product so that it can cut through any amount of residue without having air pinning of residue and without applying additional downforce onto the field. Uh, our side-by-side -side testing has shown that we can produce six to 12% yield increases in most uh, residue situations. And our goal is to keep regenerative farmers in the practice of no-till and the use of cover crops for more seasons. Cauley says the product pays for itself within two planting seasons. He'll have more information at the National No-Till Conference. Next month in Indianapolis, head to notillconference.com to register. And let's wrap things up with our video of the week. This one comes to us from the Big Soil Health event in Cedar Falls. No-Till Farmer 2023 Conservation Ag Operator Fellow Lauren Steinlage is formally presented with the 2023 Iowa Leopold Conservation Award. There he is on stage with his grandkids, getting pretty emotional. Steinlage thanked his mentors, including the late Dave Brandt. And we want to thank Lauren for all his insights over the past year and always being willing to share his learning experiences with our audience. So keep the videos and photos coming. Send them my way in Newman at lespub.com. That'll do it for this episode of Conservation Ag Update. Thanks for spending part of your busy day here with us. See you next time.